Hallelujah. Ocholi Okutepa is my name, in case you are wondering how to pronounce it. Um, I prefer you sit a bit behind, like in the middle. Um, Ocholi. Somebody say Ocholi. Pastor was calling me Okoli before I said Pastor, no Okoli. <laughs> People are taking him into South African pronunciation. Praise God. Okay, I'm a lawyer by training. I'm... <laughs> okay. <laughs> We go to campuses a lot, so I understand, I understand your response. Yeah. Okay, I've been a lawyer for nine years. Um, my wife's a public servant. Um, she's a paramilitary officer. But together we run relationship and marriage outreach. So this is like one week away from work. Um, we do meetings in, on campuses and um, in Nigeria too. Like next week, 28th of April, Saturday, we have the singles and marriage sit out in Abuja. We expect lots of people to teach. Uh, we had the last sit out in February. Then our next and major annual event is in August in Nigeria. Um, this book is sold out. It's just on Amazon now. You can get paper copy. Um, this is a paper copy ordered from Amazon. I think it's currently 10 or $8, I can't remember. Uh, Help, I Think I'm in Love. It's a 2015 book. Um, you want to really have that. It's, it will teach you a lot. Praise God. Um, I think I need to get back and find a way to drop the price for the next two weeks so that just for your sake see you are so you're amazing people uh, praise God praise God amen what did you guys put here I'm so excited I mean <laughs> did you put something here <laughs> perhaps I should walk over there you know praise God oh, it's everywhere okay let me start by saying all of you gentlemen I'm seeing here if you don't move quick I marry these beautiful sisters I can see. I will charter a plane from Nigeria with handsome young men, fly down, marry all of them, and send them back home. <laughs> Clap for yourself, beautiful ladies. <laughs> and just before you are done clapping for yourself, just because they are students and starting in life, if you are waiting for big money and big car, I will bring some Nigerian beautiful ladies <laughs> that understand that life is a process. You see, nobody's clapping now. <laughs> Praise God. All right, let's go back to the Old Testament. Second Kings chapter 7. Let's start a journey from the past into the present. Praise God. I like that. Amen. Praise God. Hey, I want amen. What's amen? <laughs> amen. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Second Kings chapter 7. Are you going away? You were doing things, 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 and it was nice. <laughs> Praise God. Have we got Second Kings chapter 7, verse number 3? And there were four lepers, you know, four leprous men at the entry of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Oh, awesome. And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Somebody said they were leprous. They were seated. They were going to die. Somebody say with me, they were leprous. They were seated. They were going to die. We're going to say that one more time because it's so important. Say they were leprous. They were seated. They were going to die. Let me say this to you. Everybody here is from a culture. Every culture on earth from the fall of Adam is leprous. Every culture, including mine, has its weaknesses. I say this as just a matter of information. My parents were separated in 1991, divorced in 94. When my mom passed four years ago, April 28th, uh, 2014, my parents had been in divorce for 20 years. So when, as first son and first child, I was burying my mother, I was burying my mother as son, husband, and father. There's nobody who ordinarily has a perfect past. When it comes to the issue of relationship and marriage, you must first of all identify the leprosy in your own culture. 
you must first of all identify the weakness that is prevalent where you come from. You know why? Except you make a move about it, you are going to die in the condition you find yourself. That's why you see sons who come up hating what their father did but repeating it. It is not enough to hate what you dislike. There is something you must do to move past it. You know, when I get married, I say to my wife, I didn't have the privilege of what I want to create. You are my chance. You are my opportunity to have what I missed. Because in my living memory, I've had other mothers, in my living memory, I cannot remember as a person sitting under the same roof with father and mother. My memory does not contain it. But my condition should never become my conviction. My condition happened to me. My convictions are crafted by me. So they looked there and said, and there were four leprous men at the entry of a gate. And they said, and they said, the second thing you must note this morning is who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? The leprous men said to themselves, what did they say? Why sit we here and die? It matters who you are talking to. On a certain day, Adam went where I did not know who sent him. Then Eve had a conversation with the serpent. Your conversation will determine your future. A lot of you have been coming to church, you don't even know that that is changing the narrative of your destiny. Why? You are having a conversation with the word. Eve spoke with the serpent. If you read through scripture and you're a Bible student, you also realize that the Bible said that Cain spoke with Abel. Abel was having a conversation with Cain when he smote him. Who you confer with is the one who will make or smite you. Some of us are in deep conversation with the wrong people. We're in deep conversation with people who validate the culture that is destroying us. We're in deep conversation with people who do not believe your future is bright. Some of us are in deep conversation with people that we need to break off from. Some of us are in deep conversation with men who say to us it's impossible to have a good marriage. Some of us are in conversation with girls who think that men need to feed them by selling their bodies. Change who you are talking to. And they said one to another, why sit we here and die? I already recognize my situation. I already know it's bad. Don't tell me what I know. Tell me what I'm looking for. Marriages are breaking in South Africa. And so what? Men are this way. I'm not men. I'm Ocholi. Why sit we here and die? I'm not an Igala man. That's what Nigeria says. Because I was born to Igala parents. The Bible says in Christ there's neither Jew nor Greek. I'm from Zion. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the kind of conversation I must make. Am I denying my identity? No, I, I came here with a green passport. But you know what Paul says? He says, henceforth know ye no man after the flesh. So I am Igala by tribe from Nigeria after the order of the flesh. But who am I really? Before God. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's who I am. And how does the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus marry? They marry well. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they said one to another, Why sit we here and die? I'm not going to die here. The culture is not going to swallow me. Matthew chapter 6. Oh, thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. From verse 10, I'll show you something. Praise God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Thy will be done where? On earth. Somebody's wondering, is this not relationship and marriage seminar? I didn't come to tell you sweet nothings. I came to teach you foundation. What is the kingdom? Every kingdom has a king, a culture, and a law. 
in modern times, you have a leader like a president. You have a culture. The way things are done here, you have a law. Thy kingdom come until his kingdom comes in you, his will will not be done in you. And what is a kingdom? A king, his domain, and a law. His domain contains his culture. What culture rules your life? Thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom. What culture rules your life? You know, somebody says to me, where I'm from, that's how they do it. You don't know where you're from. I know where I'm from. I don't know if you guys sing this song here. I know who I am. Oh, oh, oh. it's not just a song. It's a conviction. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How is the will of God done in heaven? Is God randy in heaven? If God had a wife, how would God treat his wife? Is there disorder in heaven? Thy kingdom come. Do you think God will cross his leg and be smiling when I beat up my wife? Nonsense! Pow! Stupid! Pow! Then God will say, whoa, that's my son! Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Let's go back to Second Kings because there's a lot of lessons to learn there. Why sit we here and die? The first thing they recognize is that they were lepers. The second thing is that they were seated. How many of you are seated deep in your culture? You are seated. You are comfortable in your culture. <laughs> I know where I'm from. I don't know the names. I only know Zulu. So it's that Zulu people don't feel attacked. That's why I'm just saying where I'm from. Praise God. Give me the other names so that I can use them. Zulu, uh huh? Yeah? Vendor? Zwana? Mm, something, something. Mm. <laughs> why sit we here and die? Let me say something to you. If you're as good as your father, you're a failure. I need you to think about that. If you are as good as your father, you have failed. Why? The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former. I've not even talked about his failure. I'm talking about his success. If you are just as good as your father, you have failed. Why? You have retrogressed. So let's not even talk about if you're as bad as him. So if you're as good as your mom, and you just talk as, just as good as your mom is, you are failed. Why sit we here and die? Why must we, you know, this is what they say to themselves. Why must we draw a boundary based on our condition? You know, they say to themselves, well, we're sitting here. Nothing is going to change if we just keep sitting here. And they looked at him and said, well, how long have we sat here? I, let me ask you a question. Are, are we not tired of the way that life is going? The Bible said that wisdom is justified in our children. Wisdom. What is the result of the way of the world? You can see the result is destruction. Absolute destruction. Verse number four. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He is alive. If we say we will enter into the city, then the fireman is in the city. <laughs> and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. <laughs> you know, they, they talk about the devil at the deep blue sea. I go, oh, you guys are singing about right, left, and God is there with you, no problem. These guys didn't have that opportunity. If they go right, they die. If they go left, they die. If they go forward, they die. They go backward, they die. <laughs> They're going to die anyway. <laughs> <It's cold. laughs> None of you have ever been in this situation. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, by way of joke, let me just say this. It's like um, back in the days when I used to be really afraid of flying. 
<laughs> Bro, I know I have some friends here who don't even like airplane at all. You know, then we got in the air. The plane was just going. I'm like, God, is this the end? <laughs> it's like this thing is going to just fall. Oh, oh, oh God! You know, it's in the plane. You see people who don't believe in Jesus. Say, Jesus! Then you turn around like, you know Jesus? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. You know, like, and I was saying to my wife on our way from uh, Johannesburg to this place, I like, what if the pilot just comes out of the cockpit and he's not doing it? <laughs> and I take over the plane like, hello, control tower. Is Ocholio Kutepa? No experience? What do I do? <laughs> Praise God. In that case, if you fly, you die. You land, you die. <laughs> because there's no experience. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> All right. And if we still still here, we also die. Now, therefore, come. Ha, ha, ha. The power of the come. You know, Jesus called Peter and he said what? There's a call to you today. He said, come. Let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. I'm about to explain something to you today. An enemy you do not confront, you would never defeat. They were seated. If they went back into the city, they saw in the city. But the only place there was food was with the enemy. You must confront the devil who stole the best of mankind. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. Do you realize that these guys were not without option? In the beginning, it sounded like any direction they moved towards, they would die. But suddenly there's an option in confronting and moving towards the same enemy. You know, I met people who are tired of even thinking about marriage because they are seeing so much failure. The only way to still make it is to approach marriage. So they said, if they save us. See, you must approach the same thing you are afraid of. You don't confront fear by running away from it. You don't confront failure by running away from it. You confront it by going towards it. I have failed in my life several times. But the only thing to do to failure is to attack it. Go for it. So I'm speaking to people that I hope this morning who confront the fears that they have. Who confront the same situations that are confronted. You're not going to die in this battle. Let's go on and you'll see what happened. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come unto the uttermost part of the camp of the Syria, behold, there was no man there. Some of us are afraid of what doesn't exist. Ah, men are just that way. Not the man God has crafted for you. Let me say something to some of you. God has been preparing a woman for you. She doesn't even look like where she is from. Why? God has taken his time to order her steps into the right knowing. Have you ever seen somebody you just wonder like, are you really from that tribe? You don't act the same. You don't act the same. Then you say to yourself, excuse me, but I thought, I thought they were really bad people. I thought the headquarters of witches and wizards is in their home. How come she can speak in tongues? How come you step on her and she's still composed and just calm? I thought they were violent people. Excuse me? Have you ever met somebody? She's 24, no boyfriend, no history of boyfriend. Excuse me? I thought where you're from, they start having boyfriends at 12. Do you get what I'm saying? And have you ever met a modern Mary Magdalene who has got past? But Jesus has washed them so clean. You can't imagine that they're from what they have been through because God has so changed their lives and that's why I love God because nobody makes God stranded 
You know, we have a conversation with Pastor yesterday. God can never be stranded. When he wants his will to come to pass, as far as we cooperate with him, oh my goodness. And let me also say this to you because I know a story. And I'm going to share that story with you. Then we'll continue. Have you ever seen a man with a wife and just wonder, how did this woman accept you? It must have been God. Or have you seen a lady with a husband and you're just like, excuse me, this guy didn't see all the other girls, is you? Somebody said divine arrangement. Divine orchestration. You think it's a joke? Let me give you an example. There was this lady in Nigeria. He just felt like, husband is not just happening. I don't know if people pray for husbands here, but a lot of people pray for husbands in Nigeria. I know they pray here too. Hello. And how many of you want husbands? <laughs> Aha! Uh-huh, quickly! <laughs> How many of you want wives? Look at them. You know, I, some guys over there are just looking this way. <laughs> Woo! After service, that one! And some of them even have scriptures to back it. Watch and pray. Father, we thank you. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. <laughs> Watch and! <laughs> And that reminds me of when we're in school, in fellowship in school. I did some watching and praying, man. I mean, look at this girl. She's so beautiful. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. (laughs) Ah, Lord, I thank you for my destiny. Thank you for all glory. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. (laughs) Thank you, Father. You know, you are such a wonderful God. All your creations are good. <laughs> wonderful creation. <laughs> Yay! Where were we? <laughs> they showed up. Okay, the lady, the lady. Oh, good wife, you see? Good wife. She reminds Oh, baby. Oh, baby, baby. All right. <laughs> You know what happened? Then God inspires her heart to register at the gym. She shows up in the gym and meets a gentleman who was only visiting the gym for one and last time. Why? He was starting his own gym and would never come back there. They are getting married. They are married already. Aha! You know what God did? God simply ordered her steps to register in a gym because her husband was going to visit that gym once. Once. So when I talk about divine orchestration, let me give you another story. There are two campuses on our university, um, Madubelo University area. The main campus is Samaru, the, the campus where law faculty works and business administration um, was Congo campus. I ordinarily got admission and I was in Congo campus. My wife got admission. She was supposed to be in Samaru. Samaru was like another 30 minutes or 40 minutes drive. So, I mean, students don't really have a lot in common because the campuses are different. Um, I mean, the chances would have been really bad. My wife got admission to study for chemistry, pharmacy to start with, and all of that, which is in Samaru. How my wife studied business administration and ended up in the same campus as me is the doing of the Lord. She went to do her registration and whatever, whatever happened, they suggested to her to change faculty and not even within the sciences. Hello? Do you understand English? Should I speak some Zulu or the other? Uh, should I? Aha, she wants to explain to you herself. Yes, I was supposed to change course to another science course. But um <laughs> You know, I really wanted to do the pharmacy. So I said, okay, if I change our, uh, on my form, I wrote any other course so that they'll give me maybe a teaching and my parents will say, okay, I can, you know, uh, apply. Yes. <laughs> Somebody say the Lord. The Lord. Somebody say the Lord. the Lord. Hi, Jesus. Hi, 
wait, 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 wait. Hi, hi, hi. So I should have missed my wife. Hi. So what would have happened to me? Right now, there'll be one single. Oh, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Thank God. Praise God. But here's the deal. Now, here's the next point. God cannot move until you move. So, there are a lot of us, God is waiting on our move. And just in case you wonder, why did this guy say this? The Bible says that faith without work is dead. You know, I met a lot of guys also who like a lady, they have prayed, they have waited, they have done everything. Open your mouth, you are not opening your mouth. Open your mouth! Hey, hi, hi, Ocholi, the way she treats me, I don't even believe she say yes. Really? That's your belief. That's not the truth. You know, Julian lost a lot of friends for saying yes to me in the university. I've not even told you that part of the story. Can you imagine some people thought I was a rascal? Look at me. Do I look like a rascal? <laughs> look at me! Be honest, do I look like a rascal? Do you think I'm a rascal? But, uh, you know, these people are just, they're just being kind. Do I, do I look like a rascal? Some people stopped talking to her for accepting me because my brand of Christianity was not their type. You know, I was, you know, <laughs> everybody was my friend, Muslims, Christians, praise God. I mean, I was serving the Lord, great things were happening, but you know, you know this kind of brother who come to church with jeans. Praise God. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about clubs. See, I, I don't even know how to dance this. <laughs> but they just wanted, you know, Julia was so quiet and pious and so holy. They wanted a holy brother. You know, this kind of people you greet, they don't they can't even answer. Yes. yes. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? What's funny? We're talking about serious kingdom matters here. Why are you laughing? I said, why are you laughing? You are even laughing. You need to be saved. You are laughing. What is funny? The gospel is serious. They wanted that kind of me. No. Somebody laugh, man. Come on, laugh. Laugh, just laugh. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> Praise God. But here's the deal. If I didn't make my move, and I thought, but they thought this way. They thought that way. I won't have my future. So these guys moved against the tide. Let's wrap this up. Mark eleven twenty four. What must you do? What must you do? Let's take the lesson to the New Testament. Mark eleven twenty four. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is the point where you change the narrative of your future. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He is going to fulfill every request. Don't what? Don't give up on me Cause he won't give up on you He's able <laughs> Hey! Our God is able I'm about to show you something that will change your life Therefore I say unto you Who is speaking here? Jesus himself. For things so ever you desire. Let me say the truth to you. A lot of you are seated here. Your desire doesn't appear to exist in South Africa. Why? Your original thoughts, the kind of home you want to have, you are still searching for, you can't even see it. But you know what Jesus is saying? He doesn't say edit your desire. He doesn't say adjust your desire. He says what things soever you desire. So everybody close your eyes. Just one minute. And this is a very serious moment. 
reconnect with your original desire about relationship and marriage. Just reconnect. If you're a lady, what did you envision in your innocence before cultures attacked you, before, before, before failures around you attacked you as a 10-year-old girl, as a, reconnect, as an 80-year-old girl? What, what were you dreaming about marriage? Do you, do you remember, as a guy, you know, do you remember the kind of home you envisioned? You know, the kind of vacations you have as a family, the kind of kids you have, the, you know, the kind of peaceful home you would have. You know, the time spent together with a spouse that you just reconnect. Reconnect. Take your time. Just reconnect. Your original. I know some of you are having to see it through, uh, you know, the corruption of this earth that has tampered with your mind. Reconnect to the original intention that you had. How did you want it in the first place? You may even be going through a relationship crisis right now. Reconnect. What was your original expectation when you started? Take your time, reconnect. Just think about it. Think deeply about it. You know, don't be tempted to say, we're just fantasizing. No, 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 no. Go back to it. The world calls it fantasy. It's your original desire. That desire, you know, like a child who comes to his father and says, buy me a airplane. It's so innocent. Go back to your innocent, original desire about life. Thank you. You can look at me now. Bro Kenny Higgin had a conversation with a Bible scholar who speaks and writes in 22 languages. And he said, the original rendition of this scripture says, ask me anything you desire, even if it doesn't exist, I will make it and give it to you. Do not allow the corruption around edit your original intention. Because some of us are editing, you know, we're photoshopping the future God wants us to have because, ah, well, in this age and time, you can't help it. Uh, you know, in this age and time, you can't really have it. That's a lie of the devil. What thing soever. I don't know what whatever means in South Africa. Where I am from, it means whatever. What's the boundary of whatever? No boundary. What thing soever. So if, 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 if my desire is to have a home where we don't raise voices at each other, what thing soever. If my desire is to have a home where together we're in love, pursuing God, what thing soever. If my desire is to have a home that others envy, what thing soever. This is the point that the lepers came to and said, why sit we here and die? When we have a desire to live, why die in death when I can live? Why recreate history when I can birth a future? But here's the deal and the secret. Desires are frustrated and die because people do not know what to do with desire. And I'll show you what to do with desire. A lot of people are expecting to have what they have never prayed for. It's not going to happen. When you pray, not if you pray. So it begins with the desire... The next thing you must do is to pray your desire to existence. Let me give you a clear example. Lord, I give you praise. I trust you for a great home, a peaceful marriage. Oh, I give you praise. Lord, I submit to your leadership. You are the one who gives a home. You are the one who gives a peaceful marriage. I receive it from you. I receive direction on how to go because your word says that when I come to a crossroad, I will hear a voice that will say to me, this is the way, walk in it. Lord, I have come to you. Show me the way. What are you doing? You are praying that desire. So you have a lot of people walk the earth who just have desires. Desires that, and here's the truth. The Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Because you had that desire if you do not fulfill it in life, frustration will happen. So to avoid the frustration, what you do is to take desire in the place of prayer. 
<laughs> Utole, I'm young, really? You are really young? We were 18 and 19 when we met. I'm 34 this year, she's 33. And you know I'm young. You are not young. You are only young because the world lied to you. David was 17 when he was anointed king. He was 30 when he sat on the throne. You know, in Africa, we are told a lie. You see a 25-year-old man and they say, that young boy. So in his foolishness, he continues to be foolish because he thinks he's a boy. Mark Zuckerberg is my, is my age mate. So while I'm satisfied being on Facebook, he's a billionaire because I am on Facebook. Africa arise to wake up. So, you know, just in case as I'm speaking this morning, you are just waving it as I give it to the old people, please. I don't have anything to pray about yet. I'm still a student. Really? Hello. What things soever you desire when you pray, not if you pray. If is maybe when is definite, your natural response to desire must be prayer. Your natural response to desire must be prayer. And let me say this to you. You will receive what you pray for. So be deliberate about it. And this is a prayer that you must be specific about. Why? Desire is specific. You want a Chevrolet? It's a Chevrolet. You want a BMW? See, somebody even say white. Why? Desire is specific. You don't imagine the unknown. You only imagine the known. When I told you to shut your eyes, you were imagining in pictures, in clarity. When you pray about this kind of desire, you sit down with God and give Him details. If he says to you, no, 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 this particular one, touch it, then that's fine. But if he's fine with your details, who am I to refuse what the Lord is giving me? Praise God. If God wants to give you a peaceful wife, would you say, Lord, make her a little bit rough? I don't really like peace. <laughs> no, it's like, Praise God. Hallelujah. So, what do you do to desire? 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 Finally, believe that ye receive them. There are too many people praying and not believing. Wrong action comes out of lack of faith. So we pray to God for the kind of husband we are looking at. Then a dude stands in front of you whose first name is Luke and his last name is Warm. And doesn't even look half like what God intends and has told your heart. Out of desperation, I say, 15 of my friends, 10 have fiancé, 3 have boyfriend. It's only 2 of us. Me, I should remain in that category with that other one. No, I'm leaving her behind. I'm walking away. <laughs> Believe that you receive. Whenever you are waiting for God for something, you will not accept another thing in place of it. Abraham did it. We are still feeling the consequence of it. Ishmael. There are consequences we don't want, so we would rather wait in faith. Like Pastor was saying, we're married counselors. I lead you into our inbox where we counsel people. Some of you will choose not to marry. I want to marry. I want to marry. I want to marry. Oh, wait. Because there are too many married people wishing they never got married. So why not receive your desire by faith and enjoy what God gives you? Why? Bible says every good and 
perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no shadow of turning. Just in case that is not Zulu-like, in whom there is no tonton. If you didn't learn any Nigerian English today, learn tonton. You know something that they give you a gift, you don't even know what it is. Just are you a man or a woman, especially in this generation? Please, I, I, I didn't even interpret well. I married a female wife. She was created a woman, not constructed by doctors, a woman. Hello, this generation, it is well. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. As you reach South Africa, it is well. Somebody. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Believe that ye receive what? Your desire. I speak by the Spirit. There are people here. The person in your life is a dated desire. It's not your desire. You just, you have made a lot of excuses and accommodated the person into your life. Let them go. They are not your future. I will not, I'm not prophet, I'll come and be calling your name, your color of your clothes. Uh, you, as I'm speaking, your heart knows it's you I'm talking to. It's you. You know. As in your heart is, in fact, your heart is doing bing bing. You know it. In fact, I'm saying it there, I say, stop, stop, stop. I will not stop. You know yourself. <laughs> just pretend, just, just smiling with others, smiling. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. That relationship will not just distract you. It wants to sap your future and cost you time, profit. There, there's, there's, so much, there's so much progress you should make. It's, it's finishing you. It's finishing you. You know yourself. Receive grace to work out of it. Believe that you receive them what will happen? And ye shall have. I close on this. There's a difference between receiving and having. If I sent you money in your account and you got a text of the money you have received, but you don't have. Having is when you withdraw it. And it's in your hand. Spendable. It's material. Right. You must learn in prayer to receive from God before you have in life. And what happens after you receive, you don't compromise what you have received. That's why somebody may see you and say you are single. In your heart, you know, the man that God has designed for me, I will soon have. So in the physical, you think I am single. But in the spiritual, I am settled. And very soon, in the physical, you will see it. So it's not grammatical error. Believe that you receive. Receive is spiritual reality. Having is physical manifestation. This is what will kill anxiety. Because when you sit down and the devil tells you you are broke. Say, Satan, I have received money. I will soon have money. When the devil says, look at you. Nobody is in your life. Say, Satan, that's all sorted. Don't waste your saliva. Don't waste your time with me because I have received and I will have. Let me say something to you. If you have 10,000 rand in your account but it's not cash in your hand, are you broke? Why? You have it in the bank. The fact that you don't have it in your hand doesn't mean you are denied your money. I sued my bank and I won. And I'll tell you why I did. We traveled to the US. I have money. And I used my card. The bank double charged me for whatever policy they had. And I tried to do another transaction even before I left Nigeria. And I could not assess my money. I could not have my money. I went back to Nigeria. I have account with the bank. My wife has. All her children have. My business has. Her business has. That's how much we love the bank. I sued them to court. In February, I got judgment. Why? They denied me what is mine. 
Some of you need to sue the devil for trying to stop you to have what you have received. And where do you sue him? On your knees. Say, Father, according to your word, you say, none shall lack their mate. My desire is this year. What is happening? I'm pleading my case before God. What is happening? If it's something I must do, tell me. If it's any devil, people from Ibo land, any witch, whether it's from Johannesburg, Cape Town, Midrand, any direction, I bring my case to you. How can you give me what I can't have? I hope with these few points of mine, you are convinced that God wants your best. Father, your head this morning. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We connect with that desire now again. Can you, this morning, Take your original desires to God and say, God, I repent for giving up on my original desire. If you have given up on your desire or you have been editing it, succumbing to the pressures of this world, saying, ah, how can I have it different? Look at the culture, look at the, the failure everywhere. If you have been letting go of God's best, this morning reconnect and say, Lord, I receive grace. To have the best in relationship and marriage. Can you receive grace this morning and say, my future will depict what God wants and not what is going on anywhere. I'm a new stream. I'm a new stream. I'm bringing a new narrative. I'm redefining the culture. I'm an example to look up to. I'm the change the world has been waiting for. I'm the change my family has been waiting for. I'm that change. I'm that new thing. Because the Bible says, Behold, I'll do a new thing. Shall you not know it? Can you just receive grace this morning and say, I'm that new thing. I'm that new example. Oh, Jesus. I'm that new example. Oh, Shabbat Shalalai. Zaralei Baraba Shalalai. Is somebody talking to God? These are moments you redefine destiny. Like the four lepers, what do you say this morning? Why sit we here and die? Move in your spirit. Refuse to settle. <laughs> Refuse to fall into the trap of the past. Declare this morning, Lord, I'm moving forward. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We are desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Gotta be more. Gotta be more. Gotta be more than these. <laughs> it's gotta be more. Gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. Who wants more today? There's gotta be more. Can we go ahead and receive strength? Say, God, I need strength to move past where I'm from. I need strength to move past the failures I see around. Gotta be more than this. Grace is available this morning. Gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Gotta be more. Gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Gotta be more, gotta be more, gotta be more than this. Gotta be more, 
Gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Gotta be more. Gotta be more. Receive grace this morning. Gotta be more than this. Gotta be more. Gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Gotta be more. And why are we going for more this morning? For desperate people, they do desperate things. Gotta be more than this. Content for your destiny this morning. What things whatever you desire. When you pray, it's time to pray. It's time to craft it in the spirit. I will not fail where my father's failed. I will not fail where my mother's failed. I will not fail where my culture stops. There's more. There's more. Let's go for more. Refuse it in the spirit. I will not fail. I will not fail. I make a decision this morning. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. My past will not stop me. My condition will not stop me. There's more. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the past, I press on for the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Press on for more this morning. Your marriage will not fail. Press for more. Receive grace this morning. Your destiny will not fail. Receive grace this morning. I'm not going backward. I'm going forward. I lay aside this morning every weight. I lay aside this morning every argument. I lay aside this morning every culture. More Lord. More Lord. I won't fail the failures of my fathers. I won't fail the failures of my mothers. More. More. I want more out of life. I want more and I'm getting more in Jesus. I'm getting more Jesus I'm getting more Jesus I'm getting more I'm getting more I'm getting more I'm getting more my children will not miss it my children after me will carry on the legacy of more in Christ more more I'm an example more I'm a city set on a hill I'm not hearing. Christ will be seen in me. More. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Shaba baba raka baba. Zaraga baba baba. I'll bring revival to my culture. I'll bring revival to my family. I'll bring revival to my people. I'll bring revival to my friend. I am the more. I'm the more. I am the one. I am the one. I submit, Lord, to your leadership. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Take me deeper. Deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close to your embrace. Take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before. I just want to love you more and more. How I love to be deeper in love. We can go deeper with Jesus. We can go deeper. We can go deeper. Our lives must not fail. We can't fail. Our lives must not fail. The depth of God. See, God is our portion. Peace is our portion. Deep. 
deeper than I ever been before. I just want to love you more and more. How I love to be a keeper in love. Pour out your grace, Jesus. Pour out your grace, Jesus. Pour out your grace, Jesus. Take us for the Lord. Pour out your grace, Jesus. Pour out your grace, O oh Lord. Shabbat era salari, makera da kasalari baraba. Hira ba kasole barama yere kasalaba. Hey ya da da da. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's the dawn of a new era. I do a new thing. I do a new thing. <laughs> I do a new thing. Says the Lord. Kaba bara kaba. Haraba kaba sura. Haraba kaba sura. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have no other. 